Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends. And today we have an interesting topic again. Now tomorrow we are going to go live on air. I just hide the other stream so people will not be confused about where we are. But after we finish it's going to go back and tomorrow we will be live again. But tomorrow is going to be a comedy, you know, a very, very pure comedy. So if you like to laugh a lot and get fat, eh, join us tomorrow. So the topic today actually about lies shared by all Christian churches with no exception. And it's a big lie. Each time you go to a church, and I'm sure many of you heard this in a church, the priest or the bishop, whoever he is, Catholic or Protestant or Orthodox, he will say to you that the Muslims are from Ishmael and the Arab are from Ishmael. You know, since I was a kid, I like to ask questions. And I like to know where those people are getting this information from. Like, can we go and open the Bible and see anywhere it says what they are saying to us? Is it really an assumption or it is a fact? Is it an information which is true or it is a copy paste like the Abdul? Or maybe the Abdul, they say that and we say what they say. So what is this about, you know, uh, Ishmael is the father of the Arab. How we can find out if they are telling us the truth or not. And you see, I'm, sa I'm saying they share a lie. Doesn't mean it doesn't make them a liars, you know, because many of them, they share the lie because they are ignorant. And ignorant is a sign of stupidity at the same time. Because if you are a teacher and you, you know, like you specify your study in a book, I mean, I cannot say, well, this guy is not a priest, so he is not really knowledgeable about the Bible, right? It's normal. I mean, there is a lot of people, they have no idea even what is written there. But to be a priest and to be a donkey, this is a different story. If we ask people here, <clears throat> the word Ishmael, let us go to the Sibi Quran, the yellow pages of Muhammad. We will go to the Bible too. If there's any Muslim here in the chat can tell us what the word Ismail mean or Ishmael? Any Muhammadan? It's a challenge to tell me what the word mean. See, this is the, the yellow one. This is the word Ishmael in Arabic. But it's the same as in English, actually. What does the word Ishmael mean? Any Muhammadan? You will notice not a single Abdul in the world, including Muhammad himself, he knew what the word Ishmael mean. This is telling us that first the name is a foreign word. Do we agree? It is a foreign word. It is not an Arabic word. Because you can tell me your name. Let us say you are from India. You tell me your name, you know, whatever your name is. And then I don't know what's your name mean because it's a different language simply. But if it is in my language, I will know what the word mean because your name means something. Unless you are a Filipinos and you're like Filipinos, they, they create different names. Like they, they fix, uh, they bring a, a, a like a, they buy iPad and then they get, he like a, a camera. So they call their son a Sony iPad. Uh, why don't ask me? Ask the, ask the Filipinos. 90% of them do not know what their names mean. So praise be to Allah. Okay, blah, 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 blah. In my old age, Ishmael and Isaac. Hmm. Why Abraham, he called his son Ishmael? Because simply Abraham, he believed in God, and that God is Eel. Eel is a word meaning God. It's not really a name. But that will have an impact in understanding later 
what we are talking about. If you go and read the whole Quran, you will find you will not find one place anyone, any Muslim can tell us who is this eel. And what eel mean? This is why they do not know what Ishmael mean. But if we go in the Bible, we will find eel all over in the New Testament, in the Old Testament, it doesn't matter. Everything belongs to eel. But this is in the Bible. What about the Quran? The Quran, because it's made by a fool, he copied the names as they are. If you remember, uh, the that in one of his debates <coughs> was making fun of a Christian person debating him. He said, "Your God, he he you know he wrestled with the, with God. In your sorry, Jacob, he wrestled with God." <laughs> but if we go in the Quran, we will find that the Quran accepts the story. But because the Quran is made by a fool, the that he could not get it. He's just an idiot like the rest. The second you accept that the name of Jacob became Israel, that in, that means you accept that God and Israel or the angel of God, whatever it is, was wrestling with Jacob. So you ask the Muslim, okay, who is Israel? They will say to you, this is uh, Jacob. Okay, how we know that this is Jacob? I challenge any Abdul who is listening to us right now to tell us where you get this information that this is Jacob. Nowhere in the Quran it says how this Jacob became Israel. But because Muhammad is just a fraud, he copied the name from the Jews, but you do not know what the name means. By copying the name, you accept the meaning. By accepting the mean, you accept the story. Because the name is changed for a reason. And the name speak of the story. And that's why I say not everybody is good in debating. When you want to debate a religion, you have to know the other religion before you know your own. Because knowing your own alone is not enough. So if I was there and did that start laughing at this, I will make I will, I will whip the floor with him. And everybody will laugh at him because the Quran accepts the story. So when the Quran copy names, he copy the value of the names. He copy the story behind the names. We go back to Ishmael. Muslims, what Ishmael mean? Isn't it funny that your Quran have time to tell us about the ant speaking to the ant and Suleiman he heard the ant? Isn't it funny that the Quran have time and your God have time to tell us about the guy, his name is Suleiman, he dies standing for a year and nobody notice? Isn't it funny that we have a story about you know, three or four or five, even your God, Allah do not know how many they are in the cave and they stayed for more than 300 years? What does this have to do with us? And how come here we do not know who is, what happened? What happened? What happened? Why this man, his father called him Ishmael? We don't know. They have no idea. If we go in the Bible, As usual, the Bible gives us, you know, stories and details. And then he dwelt in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother took him a wife out of the land of Egypt. Very clear. Now, if Ishmael, he married an Egyptian, and his mother is an Egyptian, I mean, the guy almost became like 75%, I mean, his children, they are now 75% Egyptian. Maybe 30% because the grandfather is an Aramic. So how Ishmael became the father of the Arab?
At the same time, some foolish might say to you now, well, Ishmael is the father of the Egyptian. That is stupid to say because he married from the Egyptian. So how he can be their father? If I go now to Taiwan and I marry a woman from Taiwan, I am the father of the Chinese. So here we see how ignorance work and how Christians or Christian priests, they support the propaganda of the Mohammedan when they say that Ishmael was, or the Arab are from Ishmael. First, the Arab are not even an ethnic. Arab is an Aramaic word, meaning those who live in the desert. Whoever live in the desert, if you live in Las Vegas right now, for the Aramaic, you're an Arab. If you live in Arizona, you're an Arab. Arab is a word meaning desert. If you go in the city Quran, and we type the word Arab, which means coming from the Arab, who is this Arab? What does that mean? What does exactly mean? Well, right away, a Muslim he will say to you, "Well, the Arab, okay, that's good." But those, what, why they are called this way? I mean, why they are called Arab? You will see, it says the wandering Arab. This is one of the translation, but in reality, it is the Bedouin. Who? The Bedouin. So who's the Arab? Is the Bedouin who ever live in the in in a, in a tent in the desert? He is an Arab. It's not even a language. So today we say Arabic language, there's no Arabic language. Arabic language is collection of languages have nothing to do really with the nation language. If you change the translator, this is Bigtal, let us choose another idiot. Hilali and Khan, Muhammad Hilali. Okay, do you see the word Bedouin? The word Bedouin replaced what? Replaced the word Arab, Arab. Do you see it? This is the word in Arabic for those who speak Arabic. Bin al-Arabi. And this is a word mentioned many times in the Quran. So the Arab is people who they are Bedouin and they have no ethnic anyone and actually based on this when Abraham he lived in the tent he was an Arab too <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> it's not an ethnic if you're in Ethiopia you live in a tent you are an Arab too if you are in you know whatever who you are you know if your life is based not like doing camping you know it's like somebody going camping now and he will say to me oh I'm an Arab now no those are people, their life based on living in a desert. They have to be in the desert. And based on living in a tent, they have their, you know, uh, animals move from place to place, seeking the grass, seeking green. So when the green die here because of the desert, they go, they take their cattle and go to the front place, finding another place where it is a green. So... Even the language in Arabic confirm that the Arab is whoever live in the desert. Then if we ask ourselves more questions, you know, because always the questions can lead us to information. If you don't ask questions, you need to ask even yourself sometime. Because this is how you start searching. I want to find this. I want to find that. If we know everything, we do not need to ask questions, right? Because we know it. So, if we ask ourselves another question, okay, the Arab obviously means the Bedouin, who is wandering around, who live in the desert. And Muhammad is one of them. By the time, those Arabs, they start having towns, you know, they live in houses. But all their life, they used to be in the desert. If they find like a spring of water which is fixed, let us say, can give them always water, which is rare to find, that will make them 
change their lifestyle from Bedouin Arab who they are living in the desert intent to be an Arab who live in a house. Uh, if we ask the Muslims, can you give us the names of the sons of Ishmael? The Muslims, they have names for them. Don't tell me, don't ask them where you get the names from. I mean, this this religion is very funny. But if you read the names the Muslims they provide you, you will see none of those names are Arabic names. Okay. How come he is? And not only that, they say to you that the first one who speak Arabic is Ishmael. This is a, a very mad religion. How he is the first Arab and he married from the Arab. So the people who married from, according to you Muslims, they don't speak a language before him. They like they were mute. They were a bunch of dummies. They use their fingers to talk. So obviously Ishmael had nothing to do with the Arab. And we have even, even more proofs that the story of Ishmael went to Arabia. Uh, by the way, uh, Ishmael went to Arabia. As we said, Arabia is a desert. Doesn't mean, but doesn't mean he went to Mecca. Because obviously he married from where he went to. So here it says that he went to the wilderness of Paran and you can search it in Google right now and you'll find where is that located and you will find this has nothing to do with Mecca it's far away from Mecca and you will find that he married an Egyptian woman so obviously he is in a place where it is occupied by Egyptian let make it land of Egypt still And then whatever children will have after that, they are going to be descendant from the Egyptian man and the Egyptian women, and they will carry the same language, whatever language they are speaking. And obviously the guy, he grew up with his mother, and his mother, she is Egyptian. So what the language they will be talking or using, let us say most of the time, because Abraham was not Egyptian, himself so obviously whoever came from Ishmael because he is a child of an Egyptian woman and he is married to an Egyptian woman his children will speak Egyptian and Egyptian is not Arabic there's many naive now they will say well Egypt is it isn't the Arab Republic of Egypt this is after the occupation of Islam none of those are Egypt none of those are Arab even the Muslim, they agree that 4,000 Muslims only came to Egypt, Muslim Arab. At that time, Egypt was 4 million African. So can you believe that 4,000 Arab, they will make the 4 million Arab? That is a joke, right? So, and does not mean in the same time that Ishmael is the father of all Egyptian, because he just married, he is a son of an Egyptian. And he married from Egyptian. Egyptian is exist long before him. So he can't be the father of the Egyptian. But we can say from the Egyptian, there is some, they are from the seed of Ishmael. But not all the Egyptians are the sons of Ishmael. If we go back to the Quran, and try to understand more about what happened to Ishmael. The Muslim says that Abraham and Ishmael is the one who built the Kaaba. But the Muslims agree too that this Kaaba was exist really before Abraham. Even they say that the first one who built the Kaaba, it was the angels and Adam, who Allah, he sent him down to Sri Lanka, he did Hajj 40 times, all the way from Sri Lanka. Don't ask me how, because Sri Lanka is an island. It's not even connected to India. 
So Allah, he sent him down to Sri Lanka. And you can search right now in Google. You will find even the Muslims are fighting over a temple which is owned by the Buddhists. They want to take it because they have the, the footstep of Adam. Because this is where Adam, he land when he came with the parachute. So Adam was sent to Sri Lanka. And then Allah, he told Adam to go and do Hajj. To visit the Kaaba. And 40,000 angels were waiting for him. And he did 40 time Hajj. Okay, the story makes sense. A lot of sense. So the Kaaba is built by Adam. So what Abraham is doing now? They will say to you that when the flood of Noah happened, the Kaaba of Allah destroyed. And then there's a mountain next to Mecca, or in Mecca, sorry. Swallow the black stone and save it. And when the flood is over, he spit it out. This is why here it says, supposedly, I remember when Abraham and his son were rising the foundation, not putting the foundation of the house. Rising. So like there is something left. So they are rising the foundation of the Kaaba. Okay, we will go with this, no problem. So based on this, the one who built the Kaaba or rebuilt the Kaaba is Abraham. Let us go to the front verse in the Quran and start laughing. If we ask Muslims, and I would like to see their answer in the chat, do you agree that Abraham, he came to the Kaaba? He is the one who built the Kaaba or rebuilt the Kaaba? Anyone, any, any Muhammadan here? Any Muhammadan? Eh, I'm not going to wait for their answer. They will say to you, yes, we agree with the Quran that Allah, he sent Abraham and Abraham was a messenger in Islam, remember? And Ishmael was a messenger. But hold on, how that will work now? Read with me this verse. How we can explain this verse? Any Muslim can explain it? Did Allah send the messengers before Muhammad to Mecca? Any Muhammadan? How you say that Abraham and Ishmael, they were in Mecca and they are the one who rebuilt the Kaaba and they were warning people about worshiping God. And then you say that those people who live there, they never had before anyone to warn them. Is it you Muslims believe that Allah, he gave Abraham a book? And as usual, when we say something, we have to support it. Chapter 87, verse 19. So Abraham, according to Islam, he had a book. You see it? So how none of those who live in Mecca, they receive before books or a warner? Do we have any Abdul here? Abraham, he have a book according to the Quran. Moses have a book according to the Quran. But Abraham is a person who went according to the Quran, he went to Mecca. And when you say he was a prophet and Ishmael was a prophet to his people, that means he have people. And those people are supposed to be the, don't you Muslim you say that the descendant of Muhammad is descendant from uh, Ishmael? Well, this is his people then. So if nobody came before that day, that means the story of Abraham going to Mecca and rebuilding the Kaaba is a fraud.
right? I'm going to open my Skype. Give me a second. <clears throat> so in case there is any Mohammedan would like to give us an answer. He can share with us his special education, which is very high usually. Okay. All right, guys, we lost connection for a, for a second or a few seconds. It's all right. We're back. So do we have any Muslim would like to text me so he can answer us about such a stupid contradiction in the Quran? How Allah never sent a warner to Mecca to the Arab and Ishmael is the father of the Arab, according to you. If Allah never sent a warner, neither scriptures, that means Abraham was not there, Ishmael was not there, and nobody spoke about the true God, which is supposedly in your religion, Allah. If Muhammad is the first warner, that means there's nobody there before him, ever. To warn people about worshipping so-called God, Allah. Somebody is challenging me, text me, so I will call you. Challenging me in what? How many potato you can eat a second? You want it cold? Anyone will say stupid words in the chat, I will block you. Like, aren't you daily doing this every day? This is my, this is what I like to do. What's your business? You don't like it? Don't come here. Don't be silly and don't be like a kid. His, his, his diaper is full of poo-poo and coming around with big diaper look funny. If, you, if, if I am not tired from doing this, why you are here? If you are tired of it, don't come here. Are you stupid or what? I mean, what's, what's wrong with people? Don't get married, okay? Honestly, I feel sorry for women. Because I find that the most stupid comment ever posted is men comment. I truly feel sorry for them. So... My Skype is open. Who is the Abdul would like to text me and I will call you immediately to tell me how such a contradiction, silly contradiction happened. Anyone? Any Mohammedan? <clears throat> don't ask me a question have nothing to do with the topic now his uh, Quran is a miracle this verse what's wrong what, guys focus with me please what's wrong with you what kind of battery you are using focus focus learn how to focus we have a topic I mean did you ask yourself before you asked me the question which had nothing to do with the topic why you are asking the question now what's wrong with people Having the chat open is the fastest way to make us somebody commit suicide. I mean, look what I'm talking about and look at the question in the chat. Do we have any Muslim have a comment, have an argument, have an answer? He would like to present about what we are showing you, which is showing a clear evidence of a stupidity in the Quran. Any Muhammadan? So what we see here, that all the story about Abraham going to the Kaaba and Ishmael was there and he married an Arab woman, uh, it's, it's a joke. 
because even the Quran confirmed that this is a town nobody came to it before from God to be a warner or to bring scriptures. Never. And the text is so clear. We and we have given them no scriptures before the study, nor send them we into them. I mean, that's the translation. We send, nor send them we, we into them. What is that? I mean, I always I say like, okay, my English is funny. Like, nor sent we into them. Like, let me change the translator. I, I feel like I'm in a moment. I don't know what is that, man. This is this is too much shish kebab. Well, And we had not given them scriptures which they could study, nor we send them before you between two bracket O Muhammad SW. The short wave Muhammad, you know, Muhammad is short wave. Do we have any Muhammad? After I finish my you know my broadcast, the Muslim they will post in the chat, I will challenge you face to face. Okay, well, wait until face to face happen. For now, we have a lot of Muslims who are going to leave Islam after they see the stupidity. It's a clear contradiction. Any Muhammadan? The purpose behind saying that Muhammad is from Ishmael is to give Muhammad a legitimate lineage line from Abraham so people will accept him more and when the Christians and I say the Christian I mean everybody you know because some naive dummy people you know they say those are Christian those are Christian those are Christian obviously you are the last one to be Christian too Christian is whoever believe in Jesus to be his Savior his Lord to be in the to believe in the Father the Son the Holy Spirit So when a Christian priest from any of those churches, major churches, they say that the Arab from Ishmael is showing us his ignorance, his stupidity, and that he is a copy-paste. He's a potato. He don't want to learn. He don't want to search. Secondly, how in the world you come to a conclusion when there's no book ever written saying to us that Ishmael have this son and 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 this and then we arrive to Muhammad. Even Muslims didn't have such a book. They start writing those things later after Muhammad. Muhammad became a person of interest after not before. There's no such a book. So how much then they can go back in history to Ishmael when they don't have any book about Ishmael? Never have one. My Skype is open until now there's no Muhammad. Now what happened? Was it a shot in the head? What happened to the brave Abdul? Who can answer? Huh? What happened? Uh, this is... Uh, And, but this is from yesterday. Oh, this is even from Friday. I'm trying to find a Muslim. I didn't find anyone. Anyone? Nobody? All right. Well, until Muslims wake up and give us a call, we continue then. So, as you see, 
the Quran is so clear. And whatever now the Muslim they will start saying, no, no, no. He is talking about the people of Mecca. Abdul, yes, people of Mecca. Don't you say, isn't it the Quran saying that Muhammad, Abraham and Ishmael, they came to the people of Mecca? They are the one actually, according to you, I mean, they rebuilt the Kaaba, the, 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 the Mecca was there, but some Muslims they say there was no Mecca really. Uh, but, but okay, if there is no Mecca, that's mean the statement in the Quran about rising The foundation of the house is wrong. Because you don't try something, it not exist. There is a foundation, the Kaaba was collapsed. And we have tons of stories in your book saying that it was built by the angels and then Adam, he did Hajj 40 time and we can show the reference. And not only that, it's speaking about that the black stone was embedded there and it was where the Arab put, the Arab women specifically, who want to have a children, but they cannot have a children. They go when they have their period because obviously they are not getting, you know, the opportunity to get, to have a child because this is why, this is a sign of not having a child or be able to have one. You still have in your period coming. So, when they have their period, they go and they touch their private part. They walk around the Kaaba totally naked. Totally naked. Because the black stone was the fertilizing stone, the vagina. If we ask the Muslims, okay, what was the religion around this Kaaba? If this Kaaba built by Abraham, how this Kaaba became a place of sex? How this Kaaba became a place where women, they want to have babies, they go, they touch the black stone, and after that they do boom boom. Read with me carefully, and this is in Al Bukhari and etc. It doesn't matter, like, oh, this is Sahih. They will say to you, anything is embarrassing, they will say to you, it is the if. The if supposed to mean weak. The fact, even the weak hadith is accepted. And the fact is that Islam is weak because the second you try to hide behind that, if they meant to say this is fabricated, that's mean how we can even trust you to tell us about your religion if your books is full of fabrications. And as long as it is fabrication and it's in your book, that's mean you accept it. And as long as you accept it, that's mean you are a fool. Because you just said it's a fabrication. <laughs> but this is not in that category at all. This is Sahih al-Bukhari, which is the most, this is the second book after the Quran. And the funny thing is that Islam is a religion did not establish by the Arab. If you go like, when a guy, he called me a few days ago, he says, do you know the Arabic grammar? Yeah, the one who made the Arabic grammar is not even an Arab. I mean, what the Arab did in this, in this earth? Even their language is not fixed by them. It's fixed by a Persian person. And they say that the Persian are their enemy. And this one is a Persian too. And Sahih Muslim is a Persian too. I mean, everybody is a Persian. Where is the Arab? The Arab were busy cooking goats, riding their neighbors. So, read carefully with me what the, what the Muslim they say. During the pre-Islamic period of ignorance, the people used to perform tawaf in the Kaaba naked except the homes. And the homes were Quraysh and they were their offspring and the homes used to give clothes to the men who would perform the tawaf wearing them. Simply what they do, the same as they do now. The Muslim, they wear the clothes of the homes. They wear a, a sheet. They are naked. They are wearing nothing underneath. But this is something they used to do, but what they used to do too, they are totally naked. And they go around the Kaaba. 
Okay, question to the Muslims. You are saying this is the pre-Islamic ignorance, but how come Muhammad, he did not forbid it all those years, he never spoke against it. Have you ever heard of a stupid book more than this? This book, he speak about not to eat pork. Not to eat what? Pork. Okay, no problem. But how come this God, he did not make a verse about people going naked around the Kaaba? Huh? Which one is more important? Eating pork or people going naked around the house of Allah? Why Allah he ignore it? Not a single verse in the Quran speaking against people going naked around the Kaaba. Totally naked. Which I'm sure there's many they would like to join the club. Any Muslim can tell us? Was it accepted to by Muhammad? Obviously it was, because Muhammad never spoke against it. If I'm wrong, show me. Show me, show me, because the second you show me, you will be embarrassed. There's a story, if you read my book, Six and Allah, you will find in the story there that Muhammad, he saw a woman, she is totally naked, going around the Kaaba. And he wanted to sleep with her. He don't want any men to have her. And supposedly after that, it wasn't allowed to go naked around the Kaaba. The woman, she was going around the Kaaba singing a song, saying all my, I don't want to say the word, I mean, whatever I'm showing you, they'll make it simple, like her breast, her private part, her vagina, whatever we saw exposed is not available. This is the song, which means men don't, don't come and jump. Muhammad was in the Kaaba watching those women going naked around the Kaaba and Muhammad did not scream, shame on you. He did not. He was watching, enjoying it. When the Jews, they were selling and buying, not in the temple, not even in the yard of the temple. The temple have like many yards. In outside the yard, in the front of the temple, Jesus, he got so upset and he flipped the table on them and he said to them, you made the house of my father a bazaar, a market? Muhammad, he see women going around the Kaaba naked. He had no problem. The problem for him to eat pork. And by the way, eating pork is lawful in Islam. In the same verse it says, if you are hungry, you can eat it. Which is very weird. I mean, so all this, all of this the drama to say to us. Am I heard? Hello? No, no, nobody, nobody can do hacking. Uh, it's uh, most likely it is my security software. I have, I have a lot of uh, very tough security. So mostly my security blocked my connection. Am I heard now? All right, that's good. I'm not going to apologize for this. You like it, like it. You don't like it, leave. <laughs> I'm sorry for losing connection. It's not my fault. I can't be sorry for it. Anyway, so do we have any Mohammedan? What is the Mohammedan? You know, I quit uh, Skype so to make my speed better maybe, but I don't think it's a speed issue. I think it's my security software is is blocking my connection. This is usually does not happen, but eh, you know things happen sometimes. Do we have any Muhammad that want to say anything? So as you see, all lead us to one thing. As long even the study book of Muhammad 
saying it clearly that before Muhammad, nobody came to Mecca. That will make a total contradiction of chapter 2, verse 1 to 7. That Abraham and Ishmael did that. And not only that, actually, if you read the verses after it, you will see that according to the Quran, there was a nation. And the nation is spoke to by Abraham. Read carefully. And remember, remember, you know, it's funny, funny when the, uh, when the Muslim, they make translation says, and remember, where is the word remember in the verse? Because, uh, you see, when the Muslim, they add those words, obviously the Quran is not enough to make any sense. So we have to put tons of brackets. Because the one who made the Quran is so good in Arabic to the point he cannot make a little sentence clear. Imagine you have a sign for a building, and the sign says, uh, go to uh, T. T is a symbol of kitchen. Like, what the heck? How, why you don't put K? And you put like a bracket next to it. T mean kitchen. And then you say, and then sit on D. D mean chair between two brackets. Like, why are you doing what, what is that? So go to go to T, sit in D, drink from F, and eat from Y. And then, in order to understand what this Abdul talking about, we have to put we have to insert tons of brackets to make it acceptable, or to make it a little bit make sense. Be nice, Javad. Do we have any Mohammedan? Does it say that Abraham was there and then the verse after it says, Allah, he says, our Abraham, he says, our Lord, make us Muslims, not submissive. This is a false translation. Muslims, mean surrendering or surrender not submissive this is a lie and even there's very well known christian who speak about islam still they say the same stupid thing they say to you islam means submission it doesn't matter how much many time you try to correct them they go live and they say uh, uh, um, uh, uh, islam means uh, to uh, submit islam means to surrender and we prove it to you many times so we surrender into you and of our spring nation to be Muslims. So there's a nation, they have offspring, and he was warning them, and he built the Kaaba to worship. So the Kaaba, according to the Quran, was in a place of worship since the time of Abraham. And the one who raised it again is Abraham, and Ishmael was with him. And then Abraham, after he finished, he asked Allah to make all those who are around this Kaaba Muslims. Okay, but that means there is people there. And as long as the Muslims, they say that Ishmael was a prophet, well, it doesn't make sense that Ishmael was prophesying to himself. You can't be a prophet if there's a group of people you are teaching them. But if you are talking to yourself, that's a very silly. And then here it says, our Lord send them, send among them a messenger. Of their own. <laughs> Look at this disaster. Anybody notice the stupidity here? I want to see in the chat who is the one discovered the stupidity in this verse. Anyone notice the stupidity in this verse? Who, who will notice with me? Let us see. This is the Cow chapter, verse number one two nine. 
Who noticed with me something extremely stupid here? By the way, I exit Skype because nobody is, Muslims are not calling anyway. And as long as my connection is not good today, so better have less connection. Who noticed the, the, the stupidity here with me? Anyone notice? What Jesus to the Arab? What does that mean? Hold on, my friend. What? Go, what where are people going? Hold on. I said to you, use your brain. Don't use your finger. Listen. They are asking Allah to send one to them from them. Read carefully. You see the translation here is between two between two bracket, which is not in the Quran. When you see it between two brackets, it's not in the Quran. Abraham, he said, our Lord send among them a messenger. So who are you? <laughs> when I say send, send among them, that's mean them they all exist. And I am the one who's asking for it, so I'm exist too. And I am a prophet supposedly, and now I'm asking Allah to send among them one from them. That's mean Abraham and Ishmael, they are not from them. That's mean Muhammad is not from Ishmael. Is Ishmael one of them? Hey Muslims, is Ishmael is, an, is the father of the Arab? Is he one of them or not? See the stupidity? Do we have any Abdul? Who is talking supposedly Abraham? Abraham is talking. Supposedly Abraham is talking. All right? But you see here the stupidity here. It says, Our Lord, make us Muslims into you, and our spring nation Muslim into you. And show us. Uh, I mean, this translation is very funny. I mean, is it the translation? What is this word here? This reminds me of a Pakistani boy. He go to YouTube. He make a video five every five, every five word in English. He make like two words in Arabic. Suppose because he want to show them that I speak Arabic. You know, like manas brother and sister. Ma adri mean I don't know. And then the scorpion will hit you. You remember? But don't play that video because now the, the the pagan the pagan people in Europe and America they are practicing Halloween. The stupid pagan, many of them they claim to be Christians. If we change the translation, let us see another idiot, Yosef Ali. Our Lord, our Lord make us Muslim Boeing. Like this guy, he add the word Boeing. Boeing? Where is the word Boeing coming from? Maybe he want to say Boeing, Boeing, Boeing. I mean, we just changed the translation. There was no Boeing in the other one. Here there's Boeing. Okay, we will go with the Boeing 777, Boeing. Our Lord make us Muslims. Okay, to the, to the will, between two brackets. Okay. Here we go, bracket again. And our Brogni, a people Muslim, again Boeing. 
Where is the word Bowen? And then he continued, Our Lord, send among them a messenger of their own. Any Muhammad, I want to explain such a stupidity. So Abraham was asking Allah to send the messenger to them from them. That's mean neither Ishmael, neither Muhammad is from them. Anyone? But if you go down a little bit, just to show you how silly this Quran is. And this was the legacy that Abraham left his sons, and so did Jacob. Oh, my son, Allah has chosen the faith for you. And then die, no expect in the faith of Islam. Like, hold on. So this is always not even about Ishmael. So the prayer here, Allah was asking, sorry, Abraham is asking Allah to send a messenger between them, Jacob and Isaac, to be a prophet for them. But I thought Jacob and Isaac both are prophets. Abdul is trying to call me. Well, I'm afraid if I go back online, I mean, uh, with Skype, I will lose connection. As you see, the connection is not good today. What a stupid religion. And then here we go. We were, you, were ye witness when the death appeared before Jacob. Behold, he said to his sons, What will you worship after me? They said, We shall worship the God and the God of our fathers, of Abraham, and Ishmael, and Isaac. So where those things happen? Let us go back, just to connect the dots together. Muslims, when Ibrahim, he come, to Mecca. Did he come with Jacob and Isaac? The Muslim, they will say no. Okay. But after Ibrahim, he built the Kaaba, right away he is speaking not to Ishmael, he is speaking to Jacob. How would that happen? Where is Ishmael? Is it hard to understand? Listen carefully. Abraham, he said to Allah, send among them messenger. Now we will put here a mark under them. Them. Right away we think, okay, them is those who live in Mecca because now he just spoke about building the Kaaba. Correct? Read carefully. Verse number 127 says, And when uh, 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 they Ibrahim, and Abraham, he raised, and Ishmael, they raised the foundation. Where is Jacob? There's no Jacob. Where's Isaac? There's no Isaac. Okay, so this is only Abraham and, and, and Ishmael. Raise the foundation of the house, which means the Kaaba. According to Muslim, this is the Kaaba. But by the way, even until now, there's no proof that this is the Kaaba. Because the word bait, bait, is not even an Arabic word. This is an Aramaic word. This is why you go, you see in, in all over in, in Israel, like Beit Lahem, Beit Lahem, the house of bread. 
Beit, 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 beit. There's tons of cities called and towns called beit, 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 beit. Why? Because they built the house of worship. So how do you know this is was where? It doesn't say anywhere this is the Kaaba. Do you know do you understand what I'm saying? Nowhere it says that this is even happening in Arabia. The desert mean. No, it says even where. I mean, which 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 location? It says that he raised a house. It doesn't say. I mean, Muhammadan have anything to say? Where was the where was the house which Abraham he built? Any Muslim can help us. All those verses, it says, bait. Bait. In verse number 596, it says the following. Allah, he made the Kaaba the house of asylum but is that the same one Abraham he built any Muslim no answer if you go little bit and do a little more study, you will find something very important. Chapter 3, verse number 96, it says that the first house of worship was built in Bakka. Do you see the word Bakka? Not Mecca. Is my connection coming fine? Because YouTube is giving me a message saying not receiving enough video maintain smooth streaming. Bakka. What happened to Mecca? The most time they put for you between two bracket Mecca, but Mecca is not Bakka. And the word is very different. So where the first house was built ever is the house which built by Abraham, if you read the verse before it, and where it was built in Bakka. Do we have any Muhammad and have any comment? Yeah, guys, I'm not going to open Skype. I can show you even the message here. It says, Error YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain whatever. So obviously my connection is not good. You know, I don't want to open more applications which will make my connection bad. So the first house, okay, hold on. That means there's other houses. <laughs> Correct? As long as this is the first house, is the one who built by Abraham. But this is a verse was given to Muhammad, not in the time of Abraham. This is to tell about all the news that the first house was built in Bakka, is built by Abraham. Why Allah saying the word Bakka, not Mecca? Any Muhammadan? 
if we go and do a little search, give me a second. We go to Prophet Google, peace upon him. There is a temple, it's called the Temple of Al Makkah. You see here they're using the using letter Q, but it's the same as it's a Mecca, the same. Just to make the pronunciation. The temple of what? Al Makkah. What Al mean? Al have either one one of two meaning, either that or God. The God of Mecca. Where is that located? You believe it or not? This is the moon god temple in Yemen. Are we going somewhere? Do you see how similar the name? It's the same name. Makkah, Makkah. Mecca, Mecca. If we go and let me go back to Google again. Hold on, give me a second. I'll try to search for you in English so you can understand. You can search right now in Google using English, not necessarily Arabic. Yemeni corner in the Kaaba. Yemeni what? Yemeni corner. Okay, what is this Yemeni corner? Those are stones taken from the temple of Al Makkah, from the Munga temple. And this is why you will see that those stones. They are different from the rest of the stones in the wall of the Kaaba. Let us go to the pictures. Give me a second. And look, they have a police to guard them, man. Do you see how those stones look different? Did you see it? You can tell like the color is different, right? They don't match the rest of the wall. Those are stones brought from the temple of Al Makkah, which is the temple of the moon god to create a replica, a replica. I'm not saying, I'm sure I'm saying the word correct. Replica, like, you know, when you make a fake, something fake, you know, counterfeit, to make something similar to the temple, which people they use to go and do Hajj, in Yemen, which is the moon god temple. So instead of going all the way to kiss the stones, we bring the stones for you and we build the Kaaba. And this is where the Mecca obviously is coming from. The first one was built is the one in Bakka. The second one is built where? In Mecca? And here you notice that the Muslim, they make the Kaaba wear a skirt. And again, they have an opening for the skirt so people, they can insert their hands and touch the legs of Allah or the legs of the Kaaba. Do you see it? I'm trying to find a more clear picture. Oh, look at this one. This one, maybe more clear. 
you can tell that this corner is not is not from there. I mean, somebody somebody inserted those things there. Do you agree? You can tell easy, right? They don't even match. Do you see it? Look at this picture or this one. Do you see it? This is the Kaaba without the, 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 the burqa. So they went to the Mecca, Al Mecca temple in Yemen, in order to build a Kaaba which will bring more customers to their town so those who worship the moon god will go there very simple let us see if we can find some pictures uh, this is a book we don't want a book all right we found some pictures here this is the old Temple of Al Makkah, which is made simply to worship the moon god. And you will notice that the language there is not Arabic and have nothing to do with the Arab. What the Muslim they will say to you that the people of Yemen are Arab, right? Well, if the people of Yemen is Arab, and Ishmael he spoke Arabic, as they claim, then they should have the language of the Arab exist at that time, but it's not. As you see, this is have nothing to do with the Arabic language, not even close. So simply, Muhammad, who is a person he associated with the Jews, he hijacked some names in order to use those names as a ticket to enter into the society of the Christians and the Jews. It's like somebody want to create a fraud between the Buddhist. So he cannot deny Buddha. He will say, Buddha sent me, because this is what the people will follow. So he will use Buddha to make him a legitimate person. But obviously he's a fraud. This is why you see Muhammad, he makes things up. In one hand, he says that he is following the God of Abraham. In other hand, he says that Allah said that he have no religion. There's a video of Zach and Naik. Let me see if I can find it. Hold on. Time to laugh. The below question was asked by a Christian on Facebook. Facebook. What was the religion of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu before he was appointed as a prophet? Okay, what was his religion? Yeah, hold your nose. Before I reply to this question, mm. I would like to remind okay. that most of the non-Muslims and even some of the Muslims have a misconception that Islam is a new religion that came into existence after Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and they believe that Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him is the founder of the religion of Islam. Let me tell you, Islam is there since time immemorial, since man set foot on this earth and Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him is not 
the founder of the religion of Islam, but he's the last and final messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our first prophet is Adam, peace be upon him, and then there are 25 messengers mentioned my name in the glorious Quran, and our beloved Prophet Muhammad said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent 124,000 messengers on the face of the earth. 124,000 messenger. And by the way, those 124,000 messengers, they are created from the sweat of a Prophet Muhammad. When Allah, he created the world, he sent Muhammad in a journey, in a boat. And during this journey, Muhammad, he sweat and he dropped 124,000 drop of his sweat. From every sweat, Allah created the Prophet. I mean, you can tell the story is true story. I mean, I sweat always too, you know. But I don't know what God is creating out of my sweat. I'm not, I'm not sure. I hope he want to create prophets. So, Abraham himself is created from the sweat of Muhammad. Moses is created from the sweat of Muhammad. Even Isa. Jacob, Isaac, everybody. But what make it more hilarious, that 124,000 messengers, Muslim cannot tell us anything about them. If you go to the city Quran, you will find the following. That Allah, he never sent the messenger to any nation unless they are from the nation and they speak the tongue of the nation. Okay. 124,000 messenger. Where Muhammad, he got the number and which languages they were speaking. If you go and study what Muhammad he says and his religion, you will see that all those prophets, they focus in Hebrew, Aramaic, like Abraham, and Arabic. So 124,000 messengers for only three, three languages? Where are they? Who are they? How we can take what Muhammad is saying to be true? And why Allah did not say in the Quran, I send 124,000 messenger? And here you need to remember, as long as Allah, he never sent a messenger to people unless he speak for their tongue, and he have to be one of them. So how Allah, he sent Ishmael to the Arab? How Allah, he sent Abraham to the Arab. Neither Abraham, neither Ishmael speak Arabic. Even in Islamic books, they say that Ishmael, he learned Arabic at the age of 14. So he is not from them. And this is not his tongue. Did Abraham, he spoke Aramaic? For sure he spoke Ar 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 Aramaic. What language he was speaking? Persian? He's Aramaic, what you will speak? I mean, uh, uh, those questions is kind of weird. I mean, a, a guy is a German, what he speak? German. A guy is Japanese, he speak what? I mean, there's some exception, like, you know, my mom told me that when I was born, I was speaking uh, Russian. You know? Yeah. And I can prove it, by the way. Like, I can say to you, like, uh, Spasiva. This I remember was my childhood, like, when I was born. Like, I was like, Spasiva, Spasiva, you know? You know, like, okay, because, uh, you know, the uh, the lady who she gave birth to, to, you know, like, she helped the mom to give birth to me, I took her finger, uh, uh, I mean, the ring from her finger, and I told her, like, uh, like I grabbed it right away. Like, you know, I want to, you know, that's it. 
I said, okay, spasifa, spasifa. She didn't know what happened, really. She went home, she could not find the ring. And then she, you know, she said to my mom, did you find my ring? You know? A true story, by the way. This is Sahih Bukhari story. Yeah. So, we never send a messenger unless he speak the tongue of the people and he have to be from the people. So 124 messenger, where are they gone? And how Muhammad will become a messenger for the Pakistani and the Indian and Bangladesh and the German and the French if the Quran is saying we never send a messenger except he have to be from the people speaking the tongue of his own people. Hmm? So how Ishmael was missing, sent to, why Allah he sent Ishmael and Abraham to a people who don't speak his language? Any Muslim? I mean, you see, this stupid book doesn't make sense. Wherever you go, I mean, you try to fix it, you make it blind. Wherever you go, this book is a, it, it, you know, it's a poo-poo. What happened with Russian? You know, I met a woman, her name is Olga. She made me forget about all the Russian. I mean, come on. What will happen to my Russian? Still, I speak Russian fluently, you know? Let me let me remember some Russian. Here we go. Brother and sisters, the Russian originally the of Chinese, and this is the origin of the, Chinese, the Russian. Okay, here we go. Who can prove me wrong? If a prophet Muhammad says so, they will say we accept. Nobody want to ask a question. Okay, hold on. In the same verse, it says, we never send a messenger except to, the, to his people speaking the tongue of his people. So Allah, he sent Musa to Pharaoh for what? I mean, even the verse after speaking about Musa, according to the Quran, Allah, he sent Musa to Pharaoh, but the Quran just said, we never send a messenger except to be from the people speaking the tongue of the people. Well, is Moses an Egyptian? Is Aaron an Egyptian? Hmm. And the funny, by the way, Musa, he says, Aaron, he speak better than me. Hmm. I mean, both of them, they are prophet in Islam, but Aaron, he speak better language, you know. So why Allah gave the the, the command to Musa? If Musa, if if Aaron, he speak better, what does that mean? And then Musa, he go to Pharaoh and he speak to him and he made miracle to to, to Pharaoh. But you just told us that Allah will never send the messenger. To a nation, unless he is from the nation, speaking the tongue of the nation. I mean, we can keep going forever, laughing, because the more we open pages, the more we see the stupidity. They will say to you, but then Fitta, Musa, he was the prophet sent to the Jewish. Isa, he was sent to the Jewish. Prophet Muhammad is sent for all mankind. Like, what the heck? Musa was sent to the Jewish, so what is this? Hey, Muhammadan, when you Muslim make a speech saying that Allah, he sent Musa only to his people, the Jews, what is this?
Abraham was sent to who? You say to Mecca. But are they those who are his people? You say yes. Well, that means it's not Arabic, his language. Do we have any Muhammadan have any comment to say? Let us go back to Zakir Naik. So brother and sister, Zakir Naik is going to introduce Islam for you. And the Prophet Muhammad is not the founder of Islam. We know that because Muhammad, he just adopted what was before him. He's a fraud. There's no new. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is not the founder of Islam, but he's the last and final messenger of Allah subhanahu wa Okay, hold on. Muhammad is the last and the final messenger of Allah. Okay, why? How come Allah keeps sending messenger, send messenger 124,000 and now he stopped the faucet? If you actually look with me, you will see that the Muslims, they say that Jacob and Isaac and Ishmael, they were three messengers. Okay, how? And their father is a messenger. Okay, so now we have four prophets in one house. Four. In where? In one building. Okay. How come Allah is sending four messengers to one house and he sent only one messenger to the Arab? And not only to the Arab, he's the final messenger to all mankind. Was it enough at that? Okay. When Allah he sent Aaron and Moses to the Pharaoh, they are brothers, and according to Islam, both are prophets. Why Allah he need to send two messengers to the Pharaoh? But I mean, is it the, so difficult with the Pharaoh? He's a guy and his nation, whatever his nation is. Two messengers. In the when it comes to Muhammad, Muhammad was sent to all mankind, brother. And when the Quran says we never send a messenger except speaking the tongue of his people, well, that's mean Muhammad he cannot be a messenger to anyone except those who speak his tongue and they have to be from his own nation. And here we need to remember something more funny. Muhammad, in order to be a messenger to his people, he needed the Quran in seven books. Seven what? Seven books. So how he is the final messenger to all mankind, yet his message is not even clear to those who speak his tongue. To the point I need the book, the same book, to be written, rewritten seven times. If we can make it clear to the Arab, then we can make it clear to the rest. Those who they are the Arab who speak the language, they need seven books to understand the Quran. And by the way, until now they don't understand the Quran. This is why the Muslims, they have an agreement about not to agree about the meaning of the verse. This is the only agreement they have. They say the scholars agree not to agree about the meaning of this verse. Muhammad, he said to Jibreel, when Jibreel came to him, this is the delivery boy of Allah. Jibreel, he came to him. And by the way, here we go back. Jibreel, Ishmael, you remember? Those are names Muhammad, he stole. If you ask any single Muslim what Jibreel means, they do not know. Have you ever heard of a prophet? He received a revelation from a guy. His name is Jibreel. He never even asked him, what's your name mean? I mean, come on. Okay, Muhammad is an ignorant. He's an illiterate according to Muslims. Shouldn't he knew what the name of this guy mean? Jibreel, Mikael, Israel. Where do you get those names from? It, it's a stolen names. Muhammad is a thief. So now, 
Allah he sent him book to his nation. Okay, good. Allah sent the sent the gospel to the Christian according to the Muslims. Okay, good. He sent the the Torah, all the Torah, not only the ten uh, command according to Muslims, all the Torah. Allah he wrote it to Moses by his hand, which you can imagine how many trucks Moses need to carry. So all those messengers, even Ibrahim, even David, according to Islam, they have one book. Why Muhammad? He needed seven books in order to make his nation capable of handling it. Are you following with me? Are we following, guys? Seven Quran to one prophet. You ask the Muslim what this is seven Quran is about. They say to you, it's not a big deal. It's like, you know, here it says shish kebab, there it says kebab shish. Uh -huh. So you will not be, be capable to understand Allah words unless he repeat the word for you twice and he switched the words so shish kebab became kebab shish shush idiot why he need seven books especially if those seven supposedly according to Muslims are very similar what that will do if you read carefully what Muhammad is saying to the angel according to him, Jibreel came to him and said, I, I have been sent, Jibreel, to the people who are an illiterate, among whom and are old women and old men, boys and girls, and men who have never read a book. Okay. He replied, the Quran, Muhammad has been sent down in seven moods. Like seven what? If those people do not even know how to read, who, what, what this is seven moods? Mood Allah is happy, mood is Allah is upset, mood Allah is dancing. Mood Allah is depressed. Allah has commanded you to recite your people, the Quran, in one dialect. Upon this, he said, I ask from Allah burden and forgiveness. My people are not capable of doing it. Do you see it? One Quran is not a qualification or does not fit the qualification to be capable to deliver the message to the Abdul. It's in the front of you. If anyone have little intelligence, he will notice that this is an insult to the God of Muslims. Anyone knows why? Anyone knows why this is an insult? No, forget about Muhammad now. This is an insult to Allah himself. Because what Muhammad just said to Allah, that you are so stupid, to the point you cannot deliver a book which people can understood. Do you remember how Muslims they say they are proud about the language, the amazing Arabic, which is funny? Okay, amazing language. So why one Quran is not enough? Imagine there's an author. He need to write his book seven times in order to understand the book or to follow the book.
that is a big failure. What kind of an author this author is? Then the stupid Allah, he sent his angel to the smart prophet, saying to him, okay, I will send you the, the book in two, uh, twice, second time. I will give it to you to Quran. Muhammad, he complained again. They cannot do it. You idiot. Don't understand. They cannot do it. Allah is so stupid. Muhammad is so smart. Allah did not get it yet that two books is not enough. Muhammad is correcting the stupidity of Allah. Allah making a wrong decision. Allah Arabic is not good enough to make the Quran still good. And the story, the comedy continue from two to three to four until we have seven. So he keep asking for more than Allah. He agreed to give him the Quran. It's like a bazaar. You know, you go in the Middle East. You ask how much the tomato, they will say to you like 10 pound. You say, OK, no, I will pay seven. The guy, he say, no, eight. Is that a real discussion with God? And what kind of a book need to be rewritten seven times in order to make it clear? And after writing the book seven times, is it clear? No, it's not. Or we can give you some little examples to get you dizzy. Now the Quran is written seven times. The Quran is written seven times. Okay. After we wrote the Quran seven times, what happened? Do the Muslims understand the Quran? He must them choose for me a chapter in the Quran so we can laugh. Which chapter you want? To see how the Quran became clear now after seven times. Your prophet said that my people cannot handle it. How you can handle it? How does Abdul in YouTube they says the Quran is preserved? And we can understand it. When their God, he said, Muhammad, he said to his God, no, they cannot. Anyone? Which Muslim will choose a chapter so we can click in it and we laugh? Which one is which one makes sense? Look at those names. Look at the stupidity. Any Muhammadan? Mm -hmm. No Muslim want to be kept averse because all of them they are. An embarrassment. Let us take this one. Chapter one, sorry, chapter sixty eight, verse number one. Try not to laugh. Because now Allah, after he made the Quran, written, or rewritten seven times, as you see, this is a chapter here. It says here, these letters, noon, etc., are one of the miracles of the Quran. I mean, have you ever heard of a stupidity like this? I am going to make a book, and my coming book, I will write the letter D, and then I will claim to be a prophet. And then people will say, this is one of the miracles of Christian Prince. What is that? Letter D. Like, what the heck? This is after writing the Quran seven times. This is after we have a book written or rewritten seven times. The explanation for it, it's a miracle. Let us see the explanation more. 
This is Ibn Abbas. And from his narration, the authority of Ibn Abbas, Ibn Abbas is the cousin of Muhammad, and he is the one who Muhammad prayed for him to explain the Quran. He said, Muhammad, he said, may Allah make you the ink of the, 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 the nation, which means he is the highest authority to explain the Quran. And for sure, Allah will respond and accept the prayer of the Prophet Muhammad because he is so close to him. It says, in the interpretation of Allah saying noon, he says noon, Allah swear by noon, which is the whale that carry the earth on its back, while in the water, and beneath which is the bowl, and under the bowl there is a rock, and under the rock there is a dust, and none knows, none knows what under the dust of Allah. This is the Quran which is rewritten seven times. Do you see it? The conclusion of the Quran from the highest scholar of Islam that the earth is carried by a whale and the whale in the water and beneath the whale there is a bowl and under the bowl there is a dust and nobody knows what under the, there is a rock, sorry. Under the bowl there is a rock and under the rock there is a dust and none knows what under the dust save Allah. Here the knowledge of NASA stop. That's it, the knowledge of a Prophet Muhammad is stopped there. That's it, we cannot tell you more, sorry. Here is the limit. Ishmael was sent to the Arab. I think Ishmael, if you go to the Arab, you will go crazy. The guy will commit suicide. Because in order to be a prophet for them, they believe him, he have to tell them some stupid stories like this. And now we just started the interpretation of one letter of the Quran. Remember, we are not even explaining a sentence. This is a letter, letter N, like Nen when you say it, like in Nancy, like Nancy, you know, Nu, Nu, Nancy, Nokia. This is letter N. Okay, are we done? No. The name of the whale is Lewish. It said its name is Lut Lutia. The name of the bull is Behemoth. And some they say the name is Talahut or Liwana. And the whale is in the sea called Adwad. There's a sea, it's called Adwad. Search for it. It's there. And it, it was a small, it was like a small bull in a huge sea. The sea in the Hollywood, Hollywood work, Rock, sorry, whereby there's 4,000 cracks. I mean, look at Abdul, they count how many cracks under the bull. 4,000. Muhammad, he dive down, 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 down under the wheel, which is carrying the earth and the top of the bowl and the bowl in the top of the rock and the rock in the top of the dust. And there is 4,000 cracks. So the, 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 sorry, the Jibreel, he took Muhammad obviously there and he like, they start counting cracks together. One crack, two crack, three crack, four crack, five, five crack, you know. Yeah, I wish there was a YouTube at that time. That would be fun. So they found that there's 4,000 cracks under the, under the rock where the bull is standing, where he's carrying the whale, and the whale carrying the earth. And then they stop. They say, we do not know really what is, that's it, we do not know more. There's dust. 4,000 cracks, and from each crack, water spring out of the earth. It's also said that noon is the name of Allah. Look at this. We start with noon is the name of the whale. We end with noon is Allah. I mean, do you see how we clear the Quran after written seven times? Just a few lines before, noon is a whale. Few lines after, noon is Allah. So Allah is a whale. Hey Muslim, can you ask your cleric to explain to us what Ishmael mean? Because based on this, Ishmael he might be like, a, you know, a mean like a, you know electricity with the Hamas. I mean, if from a letter you made a book, are we done? No. It says that Noon is one of the names of the Lord. Allah stands for the letter Noon of Allah Rahman, the beneficent, and it's also said like also said. We're not done. 
it uh, say that noon is an inquiry like what the heck we start with noon as a whale we go through that noon is Allah and now Allah became an inquiry is that a Halloween is Allah celebrating the pagan Halloween with the with the city people who celebrate it So Allah, he entered the Halloween as a whale. Then he go to the kitchen, he change his mask, he come back as a Rahman. Then he come back as an inquel. Are we done? No. And then it says, Noon is an inquel. By the pen, Allah, he swore. Have you ever heard of a God he swear by the pen? Does God he swear by the pen? You know, when people, they swear, they swear by something supposedly dear to them. God swear by the pen, why? Eh, not a surprise. If Allah, he swear by the fig, why he will not swear by the pen? Have you ever heard of a God, he swear by the fig? Actually, there's a chapter, it's called the chapter of the fig. Those Arab, They are living in the desert and there's a fruits they are desperate to eat it they love it they cannot they don't have it all the time really they can get it so Allah swear but what is very dear to him what teen was they to look at this okay Allah is talking by the fig and the olive Okay, Allah swear by the fig and olive why? And then Allah he swear by the Mount of Sinai, and then you will see an idiot claiming to be a Christian saying to you the Mount of Sinai found in Saudi Arabia. You idiot, it says Sinai. Sinai is in Sinai. So the when we say the, the, the Mount of Germany is not going to be found in France. And now I want to ask the Muslim, why Allah swear by the by the fig? Is that something dear to him? Fig and olive? Can we swear by banana? And then he says, surely we created the uh, the, the human in the best status status. Are you sure? Isn't it you who says that we created the human being to be ignorant? From the first second you created him, you said, We created the human being to be silly, stupid, ignorant, hasty. And this is a story about Allah creating Adam and Adam before he was finished. Adam, he said to Allah, finish me before the sunset. Chapter 17, verse number 11. And you can go to Ibn Kathir and you will see the story. Adam, he said to Allah, finish me Allah before the sunset. And this is why Adam was not perfect. Because he is ever hasty. He take wrong decision. But in that verse it says we created him in the best I mean, if we continue, it's going to take us forever. But the topic is, if you are a Christian and you go to a church, and they say to you that Ishmael is the father of the Arab, especially the dummy who says even more, they say that Muslims are from Ishmael. The Arab is not even maybe 5-7% of the Muslims. And the Arab are not Arab. Which means, not everyone call himself Arab is an Arab because you don't live in the desert. Secondly, as you see, you go to Morocco, they say we are Arab. You go to Algeria, they say we are Arab. You go even to Eritrea, Somalia. I mean, those, those are African people. How in the world they became Arab? Simply, Islam is a religion who destroyed your heritage, 
conquer your heritage and make you spit on it and make you forget about everything belong to your heritage and make you attach yourself to the Arab for Arab is the purpose to conquer all other nations and to take over other nations this is why when Muhammad said the one who was proud about in his inheritance before him he don't only you know he don't even want the Arab who they are Arab to have their heritage he want the heritage to start from him the one who is proud about his inheritance or inheritance tell him to go and bite the penis of your father and maybe the admin can post the hadith so you people can save it go and bite the penis of your father this is a word of a prophet asking people to, to buy penises Do we have any Muslim have any comment about what we said? Actually, you know, the Arabic language is so powerful to the point is used in Bangladesh to stop Muhammadan from pissing on the street. There's a there's a common behavior Muslim they do in their countries following the steps of the Prophet Muhammad he used to piss on the walls wherever you go he he grab it and he he piss in the street. And that will make like imagine somebody pissing under your window. Literally, I'm not I'm not you know. This is how it is all over the Middle East and all over Islamic countries. So what the Arab come sorry what the Muslim come with is writing Quranic verses in the wall of the house. So nobody will dare to piss in the house on the on the wall. Smart idea with the ignorant people. Bangladesh use sacred Arabic to stop peeing on public. A person who don't know Arabic, he don't even know what is written there. What if it's Quran? He will get, he will get killed for peeing in the Quran. You know that how dangerous this is. So if you have people coming, paying, and you're know, like, you can't open your window in the Middle East because the first thing you smell is poop, piss. Actually, I found a video. <laughs> I'm not going to play it, don't worry. Look at this guy, you know, this is what they do. So what we do, and look how the wall is, you can tell the wall is all over the, it, it, it is too much width there. It's like a, this is the only thing is useful for the Quran. Stop people from peeing in your wall. You go outside, you write a few words, you write the name of Muhammad on the, on the wall. Now who dare to pee, to pee there? He will cut his penis before he do it. Now, this is not about Bangladesh. This is all the Middle East. All the Middle East. Now, you might say like some countries like Emirat because now they have money. But this is how the Middle East is. I mean, they unzip it and they piss in. Because Muhammad, he pee in the street. If there's any Muslim who say the Prophet don't use to do that, challenge me. Any Abdul?
We can find the height actually. And Abdul, when I say this is a lie, the Prophet don't pee in the street. And people watching. <laughs> oh boy. Anyway, I hope we cover the topic. I mean, we spoke about it many times, but each time I go, I see people saying the same silly thing. When you are a Christian and you say that Muhammad is from Ishmael, simply you are supporting the lie of Muhammad. Simply you are supporting the cult of Islam. You see, if it's true, if it's true, no problem. If this is true, but it's not. So why our priests in our churches, they spread such a stupid, silly thing? This is your prophet pissing, standing in the, you know, on the wall. This is your prophet wiping his hands on the wall. Do you see it? So when they say uh, there is some people, they are rude, you know, I mean, they are following the step of the prophet. And now the purpose of this story, they are saying to you that the prophet, somebody, he said, Assalamu alaikum to him, where he was holding his penis, pissing at the wall. And they are saying to you, we should not do that because the prophet refused to answer the guy while he was pissing on the wall. Any Abdul? I came upon the prophet when he was passing water. <laughs> he, he passing water where? In, the, in his house? No, obviously. I mean, he, he was walking by. That's what it says. And I saluted him, but he did not reply. Till he got up and he went to, to a wall and he after scrubbing scrubbing it with his uh, with the, with a stick which he had he put his hands on the wall and he whipped his face maybe this one is not good let us see the front one A man passed by the messenger of Allah when he was urinating and he greeted him, <laughs> but he did not return the greeting. <laughs> Forget about this one. Let us see. So, I mean, look, look, oh, look how many hadith, look how many stories. Look at this. Look like many people they see Muhammad always pissing in the road. All those stories about a person walking by, passing by. Holy book, you know, this is very holy. Hmm. Anyway, now tomorrow we are going to go back live on air again, and tomorrow is going to be a pure comedy. So if you like to laugh, 
you know we have a very important topic and you will die laughing so I think we have enough for today I hope you have a good time together uh, and if you see any question saying to you that Muslims are from Ishmael or Muhammad is from Ishmael challenge him to show you the reference otherwise to shut up as simple as that don't be shy to be rude to a priest just because he's a priest because a priest who teach false information he is no priest and if you don't correct him let us say he's a good man because there's many they are good men they don't know I mean they're ignorant copy paste they heard it from somebody supposedly higher than them and they say what they what they heard So when you go to a church and you see a minister or a priest or whoever saying such a thing, say to him, where you get this from? This is the Bible. Show us. Is that fair? This is the Bible. Show us. Where you get the conclusion that Muhammad is descended from Ishmael? And to make it more even easier for him, where you get the conclusion that the Arab themselves, they are from Ishmael. When the Arab, they are not even one nation. Go and look at the Arab. Those who they call themselves the original Arab, they don't look like each other. The Prince of Qatar, he look Indian, literally. And his people the same. People of Saudi Arabia, they look different. People of Kuwait look different. People of Emirates look different. Hey, how come they are Arab if they don't even match? If I go right now, you see, many people do not know that the Arabian Peninsula, which is a desert, you know, it's a desert. The Arabian Peninsula is nothing but a desert. Let us open the map. And they call it Peninsula because simply it's like an island. What people do not notice that Saudi Arabia is so close to India, Aka Pakistan today. Did you notice that? There's a few miles between The two lands. Look how narrow it is. Do you see it? This is why you will see people look very much like people of Pakistan. If I go right now and search for, let us say, famous uh, Prince of Qatar. And he is no prince, by the way. He is just a Bedouin. The British people, they made those countries and they made them kings and princes. Otherwise, all of them, they are the last one to be called princes. This is the father. <laughs> Isn't this guy from Pakistan? You tell me. Just take the, the Arabian uh, scarf which is something they add to themselves because they live in the desert, they need some protection for their head. And you will find that you are talking to somebody from Pakistan. <laughs> Isn't it clear? Their hair, their mustache, their face, their skin color, everything. This is his son. Isn't it him from Pakistan? You tell me. And the whole country look like this. So those when they say Arab, you see, even the Muslim, they say to you that Adam was from Sri Lanka. Adam, when he sent down by Allah, 
he was sent down to Sri Lanka. So even the Muslim, they say our origin, the other Muslim, they saying our origin is India. If you don't believe me, search right now, Prophet Adam Sri Lanka. Hold on, maybe we can find Zakir Naik. Speaking about that. <coughs> Zakir Naik or Prophet Muhammad Adam Sri Lanka <laughs> He's from Sri Lanka, what you can do about it? Oh, oh stupid is amazing. Okay, brother sister. We found the wrong video. Forget about Zakir Naik. Something more interesting. Okay, tell us, brother. Tell us where uh, Prophet Adam was coming from, brother. Where, where? Where, where? Did you hear it? <laughs> so the origin of Muhammad and those who they call themselves Arab today is from Sri Lanka. Oh, you can't hear it? Hold on. Something wrong here. Hold on. I will play it again. I apologize. It's my fault, actually. onto the earth he was sent to the earth there's a question where did he land now if we look at adam alayhi salam he came down onto the earth he was sent to the earth there's a question where did he land where, where? he was he wasn't just thrown so that suddenly he landed meaning yeah. he dropped uh -huh. but allah placed him on the earth where this we find in the narration of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam where he says that adam alayhi salam nazala fil hind he came down in what is known as the indo pak subcontinent, precisely Sri Lanka. There is a mount there known as Adam's Peak. If you go there, you will find it green and beautiful as though it is not from this earth, but it is. I'm not trying to imply anything, but I'm just saying it is so beautiful, maybe because the Sri Lankans have kept it that way, but it's a beautiful place. It is, it is said that there is a possibility that that is the place. We don't know for certain that that spot is the place, but roughly there. What about Hawa? Where did she come down? Where, where? In Jiddah. Like, what the heck? The, the husband, he, the parachute sent him down to Sri Lanka. The wife, she came in Jiddah. <laughs> and how they met again? <laughs> they use WhatsApp. She shared going on location with him. So Adam, but important for us now, the Muslims agree that the origin of themselves is from Sri Lanka. This is where this idea came from because they carry through their grand grand grandfather that we are coming from India. So those who live in the desert in that area, they agree that they are coming from India, but they are not one nation. That's why they don't look the same. India have hundreds of ethnics, if not thousands. But what they know for sure, that they are coming from this land. Listen again, you know, uh, you know, by the way, it's going to be very nice if you don't like your wife and then your wife, she land in different uh, 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 continent. <laughs> like you have, a, you have an airplane accident, you know, and then both of you, you, land, you know, you land fine. But OK, she's gone. And maybe she don't like the husband. Thank God my husband fall in Sri Lanka. So how Adam and Eve, they met again. I mean, why Allah sent Adam there and Eve there? What's wrong with this religion? 
There are thousands of miles between them now because Jeddah is in the other side. You see, if you go to the map, we are not in the same location no more. In case you do not know, like now we are showing you Saudi Arabia very close to, to in India or Pakistan, Qatar, Emirat, but this is the other side of the country. So Allah, he sent Eve here. Do you see it? And Allah, he sent Adam here. Let us go. Look how far. <laughs> and don't ask me, please, how Adam was able to cross the the ocean and go from Sri Lanka to India. There's no bridge. Especially, actually, I think even until now, there's no bridge. You see, there's no bridge until now. How the guy, he went there. I mean, he's in Sri Lanka now. In order to go to India, he had to swim the ocean. But remember, Islam and the Prophet don't lie. Prophet, he tell true story. So this is why this guy is standing firm, teaching you what is supposedly the truth. Listen again, if your ears were not clean when we play it first time. Now if we look at Adam alayhi salam, he came down onto the earth. He was sent to the earth. There's a question. Where did he land? Where did he land? He, was, he wasn't just thrown so that suddenly he landed, meaning he dropped. But Allah placed him on the earth. Hmm. This we find in the narration of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam, where he says that Adam alayhi salam nazala fil hind. He came down in what is known as the indo pak subcontinent, precisely Sri Lanka. There is a mount there known as Adam's Peak. If you go there, you will find it green and beautiful as though it is not from this earth, but it is. I'm not trying to imply anything, but I'm just saying it is so beautiful, maybe because the Sri Lankans have kept it that way, but it's a beautiful place. It is, it is said that there is a possibility that that is the place. We don't know for certain that that's... Oh no, let me help you. It's for certain because the foot of Adam is there. Oh, hold on. <laughs> oh boy. What a stupid religion. Here we go. This is a website called Islamic Landmark. Let me open it. Give me a second. Adam's Peak, Sri Lanka. This is what he's talking about. But this is a building for the, for the Buddhist. The Muslim, they want to hijack it as usual. So the Muslim now, they claim that this is the footprint of Adam. He Muslim, don't you think this is very small? If Adam was like five story building or six story buildings, why his foot is so small? So they are fighting with the, with the Buddhist to take over this place. But everybody knows this is, this is a Buddhist area. So Allah, he made prophet Adam land there read carefully with me this is the footprint measuring 5.7 by 2 uh, 2 and 6 is believed to be the footprint of prophet adam uh, peace on him who was said to be 60 cubit tall it is located in the top of a mountain in sri lanka called adam's peak called by muslims not by the buddhist and this is where the temple is, Buddhist temple. They want to hijack everything, anything. Even the Buddhas are not safe from their hands. And then Eve. The spot is the place, but roughly there. What about Hawa? Where did she come down? 
in Jiddah. Where is Jiddah? Jiddah is in the Arabian Peninsula, in what we know today as Saudi Arabia. And what is the meaning of Jiddah or Jaddah or Juddah? It means the grandmother. It is named after her. <laughs> Subhanallah. <laughs> now what happened? They started looking for each other. I remember, meaning I can imagine, I'm just saying it for myself, I can imagine them thinking, I remember there was someone, you know, we had Hawa here, where is she? Let's start looking. And he started looking. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. If you picture it, you can imagine. And Adam alayhi salam began to walk. And he started walking towards where the sun was setting. He started walking towards the west. Really? And Eve, Hawa alayhi salatu as a okay, feet. Hold on, hold on, hold on. He started walking toward where the sun is sitting. And that made him go to Jeddah. <laughs> hey, Abdul, according to your fantastic knowledge, According to your prophet, the west of Sri Lanka is Jeddah. He will walk in this direction. So let's go with you. Just for the sake of entertainment. Guys, Adam he knew that the only way to fight his to find his wife is to go west. In the west we go. So Adam, he decided to walk, which is very normal, you know, I mean, all of us, we walk and he is going to follow the West because this is the only place he can find his wife. So he is here and he starts walking, 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 he walk in the water, you know, Adam, he can walk anywhere, you know, uh, he walk, he walk, he cross Yemen, then he cross, you know, to Saudi Arabia, then he go to Mecca, then he cross Mecca, then he go to Jeddah, bingo. If she was waiting for him and she just came out from the saloon, she have her hair done and her nails. Now, Maya, you might think that if she is so excited to see her husband, but now because she have her nails is done, and this is what women, they do, they sharp their nails, she jumped on him, where you been? Where you been, you idiot? You landed in a different place. You left me alone all those days. Hyena wolves attacking me, and I'm alone. You know. And then Adam will say to her, What I can do? Allah, He made my parachute land in Sri Lanka. So the guy, he walk, he walk from Sri Lanka to Jeddah. Do the Muslim think that Sri Lanka is like a neighboring city? Or in the border. And by the way, why he worked to the West? I mean, what West? What West exactly? What does that mean? By the time he will arrive, the West will change. Even your stupid Quran says that Allah is the Lord of the two West and the two East. So which one? Which one? Have you ever heard of a God? He is so good in science. Believe that there is two uh, West and two East. And why Muhammad he come with this conclusion claiming that his God told him because those Arab didn't notice that the West in the winter is different from the West in the summer. So now Muhammad said that Allah told me that he is the Lord of those two West and those two East. <laughs> oh boy. Hmm. Do we have any Abdul? Now, conclusion. You like it or not? Prophet Muhammad, he don't tell lies. 
and those are true stories and they are proving to be true. I was in Sri Lanka at that time and I saw myself, Adam, but the problem at that time, I don't have a camera. He was walking down street. I asked him, Adam, where are you going? He said, West, West, West. He said, why West, West, West? He said, Eve, Eve, Eve. SubhanAllah. If you picture it, you can imagine. And Adam alayhi salam began to walk and he started walking towards where the sun was setting. He started walking towards the West. And Eve, Hawa alayhi salatu was salam, as a female, she didn't walk too much, but she also tried to look. Look at the logic, brother. Look at the logic, brother. Because she is a female, she did not walk too long, too much, brother. I mean, now the story made sense. Before, a second ago, no. Now, I think no one, no one of you have an objection. I mean, look at this. I know uh, if she is a female, she should not walk much because she's female. Whew, that's deep. That's deep. Adam is a male. So he can walk. Makes sense. See, the story is not just a story. It's a true story. What's wrong with you? you no, know, we had Hawa here. Where is she? Let's start looking. And he started looking. Subhanallah. If you picture it, you can imagine. And Adam alayhi salam began to walk. And he started walking towards where the sun was uh -huh. setting. He started walking towards the west. Yeah, good and Eve, from. Hawa yeah. alayhi salatu was salam, as a female, yeah. she didn't walk too much, but she also tried to look for... I mean, you, you see, if you... I don't know. Most of you, because you don't like Islam, you, you are going to laugh. But if you think about it a little bit, I know that most of you are not smart like those who believe in Allah. You're not even close to that. I mean, even, cannot, I can't even compare you. But if you think about it, how in the world Eve, she will be able to walk and she is wearing high heels shoes. Do you think that is easy? It's not easy. Actually, it is impossible. So it's very logical to be a Muslim because Islam is the only religion is convincing. And there is a lot, you know, of uh, proof for the stories the Muhammadan, they say. Those are not fabricated. There's proof of them. You can go right now to anywhere, you know, anywhere, anywhere, whatever you want. You will see that women, they wear high heels. If you are a female and you are wearing high heels or you do wear high heels like this, give us one in the chat. Now, be honest with me. Do you think if she can walk far with such high heels? And by the way, if she survived the wilderness being alone all this time, because it's going to take Adam a lot of time to walk that walk. And if she is alone, how she can save herself from the lions and the wolves and the hyena and all the beasts? The answer is in front of you. The high heels. There's many men, they've been killed by high heels. You will see the guy is going to the, you know, the emergency room and he have like a shoe in his head. <laughs> True story, brother. You know, this is why men, they are afraid of women. This is why like men usually, like they go on the street, like they say he want to he wanna marry a woman. Like you look at her, she is wearing high heels. I, I better avoid this one because she is dangerous. So it makes sense that because Eve, she is a female, she could not walk long she cannot i mean what's the problem is it obvious it is adam alayhi salam no that does not mean that women are not interested no not at all not no, at all no, brother, no. 
and according to what some of the historians have to say they may hold on hold on historian listen to this word historian you see i can accept that stories is written by you know a, a, a prophet he told us this is not historian because he was not there to witness it what do you mean historian according to historian is that a historian or hysteria according to some historian uh -huh. what some of the historians have to say they met in Arafah <laughs> and this is why where the white pillar is the historians have made mention of I haven't found it in a correct narration authentic narration but they say that that where Arafah is where we actually gather that is where the two met Wallahu a'lam Allah knows best and Allah knows best because now if you ask him a question and you want to get him busted he will say to you Allah knows best with me shut up don't ask me all what I said is over by Allah knows best and who can argue with this evidence historians say the historian they found not only the Prophet Muhammad historian they found that too that if she walked from Jeddah toward Mecca and Adam he walked from Sri Lanka toward Mecca and they made their brother see how love you know by the way from now on if you ever lost let us say you are going somewhere let us say you went to a festival with your wife and you lost your wife there in the crowd what do you do walk west you walk west and your wife walk toward Mecca you will meet very simple that's it <sighs> What is the lie, Pedro? The lie is that Ishmael is the father of the Arab. And he is, and the Muslims are from Ishmael too. That is a lie all those churches, priests, they share based on their ignorance. Yeah, one of the two West, we have two West. Yeah, anyway, you might think this is a comedy. Wait for the video will come tomorrow. It's more hilarious comedy. This one is nothing. I'm going to put the video, I mean the the, the chat, uh, uh, sorry, the schedule for tomorrow back. I put it off so people won't be confused about which one to join because that one we scheduled from yesterday. So we will put it on again. Don't forget to download this video and tomorrow morning, my time, we will be live on air again for those who like to join us. But that one is a real comedy. This one is nothing yet. This one is nothing literally nothing okay so tomorrow get ready for a lot of love a lot of comedy and all of it is coming from prophet muhammad peace upon him for it is registered and documented by historian that nobody can come with better comedy than muhammad no not same time tomorrow morning tomorrow morning my time so it's going to be i think at 10 tomorrow and like new york time 10 10 30 something like that morning anyway i will make it active again in a second all right uh, after i close from here I, I i made it i made it unlisted so people will not be confused about two broadcasts because people they might think okay which one you know he's going here he's going there you know uh, because this one was not scheduled but the other one uh, let us make it listed here we go i will make it listed right away you will see it in my channel again so i want to say guys thank you for being here and i hope that if you are going to sri lanka you visit the footstep of adam give it a hug just give it a hug because this is where our forefather adam was it's time for us as a christians to appreciate the footprint of Father Abraham.
sorry, Father Adam. This is our Father, and His footstep is very important. We should actually take it from the Buddhist brother. Look at this Buddhist man taking our place. We should be the one there now. For this is where the socks of Adam was, and all the smell is there. Brother, and why there's only one footprint for Adam there? What do you think happened to the rest? <laughs> do you think that he was like a kangaroo? He have only one foot standing on, or like those birds who lift their foot up and the other one down? Brother, this is deep. There's only one footprint of Adam. The answer is very simple. Because Allah, when he sent him down, he took the other shoe from his foot. So this is the shoe footprint of Adam. And this is the only explanation, brothers and sisters. Why there's only one foot? To, you know what? For the sake of stupidity, let us say there's two footprint. Okay, well, the guy is walking or not? I mean, how come there's only two footprint or one? That's it. Sometimes you know when I say, like when I say stupidity is amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing how stupid a human being can be stupid. How far he can go in his stupidity. So the guy came from heaven. He landed in the ground. And there's only one footprint. What happened to the second foot? He was like jumping like boing, boing, boing. Was he a kangaroo? And the guy from all the steps he walked. He left only one footprint. What is that? When a human being will start using his brain, if he have any. By the way, once the police had chased me. And I deny that I am not the one who took the, you know, the inkwell of Allah, you know. Because the ink well of Allah is gone. Allah is swear by the pen. I did not take the pen. I take the ink well because the pen was in the mouth of Allah. He bite it always. So I took the ink well and then the police chased me and they said to me, we have a proof. I said, what? He said, your footprint. I said, what the heck? They said, you left one footprint there. We went there. It was nine foot tall or long. I said, but look at my shoe. I mean, it's not even 12. So why my footprint is nine foot? They said, is it hard for someone like you to shrink it? Like wash it by Clorex? And this is how they got me busted. Because they compare between my footprint and the footprint which was where the inkwell of Allah was found, or let us say, starting from. And they found that exactly they are a match. Oh, hold on. By the way, the Muslims, they have footprint of Adam in different locations too. Not only here. You know, this is this is this joke. Look at this, look at this one. Look at this one. This different one. Like what happened to the other one? And why his footprint looked like that? <laughs> This is the footprint of Adam, brother. And look, there's a flower in the middle of his foot. Do you think he was? Ah, I think he bought a flip flop from Walmart. <laughs> there's a flower in the middle. Do you see the flower? I don't know if you can see the flower. 
which genius people. This is the same prophet Adam. Look in Sri Lanka. Look at this. Adam peak Sri Lanka. <laughs> I'm telling you, one day I will die laughing here. Look at this, but this is a different one. They are saying this is the same one, but this is look different. And by the way, why it is it look like uh, like gold or something? Is it covered by gold or by uh, apricot jam? What is this? And brother, how you allow the the Buddhists to take over it, brother? And look what the Buddhists doing to the footprint of Adam, brother. Brother, how we accept that, brother? I'm really, 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 really upset. Oh, this is a girl, she is going to the sea, the footprint of Adam. <laughs> anyway, anyway, crazy. Stupidity. There's no solution for stupidity. You can't fix stupidity. Because even education can't fix it. No? Because if you if you refuse to use your brain, there's no education in the world can make you smart. Right? You know what? I get an idea. I think I'm going to take like a few weeks off and go to Sri Lanka. And I will call you, go live from there. Who support this idea? What do you think? Should I do that? I go all the way to Sri Lanka. I will call uh, uh, Mufti Mink. I say, hey, Mufti Mink, I'm looking for the footprint of Adam. I find only one. What is the rest? What is the proof? And I feel sorry for Adam. I mean, this guy, he landed at the top of the mountain and now he have to go all the way down. He have to walk in the ocean. Anyway, true story, true story. So conclusion, again, repeat again what we said in the beginning. If you're a priest, he is a Protestant or Catholic or Orthodox, and he said to you something stupid, which is a lie, that Muhammad is from Ishmael, ask him, I challenge you to prove it. Is that fair? Because if you have no proof of what he claim, that means he is either an idiot teaching something against the Bible, or he has to prove it from the Bible. As simple as that. How they knew that Muhammad is from Ishmael? Where you got this from? Bring it to me. If you cannot bring it, if you cannot show it, if you can't prove it, that means you are an open mouth full of socks of the Arab. You are sponsoring a lie which is against the Bible. And please, don't hesitate to get those priests busted. Don't be shy. There's no shyness with the truth. Because this priest is not doing his job. He did not study the Bible. He did not study what he's saying even. Before I open my mouth and say something, I have to go and search it and find out if it's true or not. If it's not there, why you are bringing me a lie? And sadly, you will find I heard it from in Orthodox Church, Catholic Church, Protestant Church. It doesn't matter where you go, you will find the same copy paste words 
the Arab from Ishmael and Muhammad from Ishmael. Arabia is a word meaning desert. People of Arabia are people who live in the desert. Aram is a word meaning hills. Aramaic is the one who live in the hills. And this is where the name of every, even the word Aram, which is the name of a person, is coming from because of the place he chose to live in. Ignorance our problem, my friend. So let us fight the ignorance. Our war is not against flesh. Our war is against ignorance and lies. And the Bible says, and the Lord said, who is the father of all lies? Is the devil. So whoever carry a lie, sponsor a lie, spread a lie, he is speaking of the devil. He is not speaking of the Lord. Tomorrow we will be back live on air again. Download this video, share it with your friends. And uh, thank you for being here. May the Lord bless you all. And this is humbly your brother, Christian Prince, was serving you for today. Happy Sunday. Pray for all. May the Lord have mercy, especially on the foolish one, for those who will pay the high price of being foolish. The word foolish is mentioned in the Bible many times. Fool is the one who follow fake God, false God. Fool is the one who disobey. Fool who don't want to listen. Fool who don't want to accept. Foolishness is the way to hell. And that is our enemy. We don't hate Muslims, and we will not hate them. We are here to save them, to show them how stupid those stories are. And if the one you follow is a fool, how foolish are you to follow a fool? Thank you. God bless you. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. We prove it every time. Take care.